Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about rim and face alignment. In the previous video, I introduced alignment, and I talked about the idea of slope. I showed how to find slope using proportion, but now I'm going to talk about slope as just a formula. Slope is going to be defined as the gap difference between the couplings over the diameter of the couplings. So we're going to be using that concept in this video. And before we get started, I want to explain what one step method means, and in particular, what rim and face method means. I'm still talking about vertical alignment. And in the previous video, I talked about how we corrected angular alignment. Once angular alignment was corrected, then you could go ahead and take a measurement and find out what the offset misalignment was and correct that. So really you were doing your alignment in a couple of steps. With one step methods, you're actually going to do all your calculations first, and then you can put the shims in to correct both angular and offset misalignment. There are two different one step methods. One's called rim and face, and the other one is called cross dial. Those names refer to how the information is obtained. So rim and face means that you get information about the misalignment through uh, dial indicators using a face reading and a rim reading. So you'll be mounting a dial indicator typically on the fixed shaft and you'll be taking a face and rim reading on the movable coupling. Let's look at an example first without worrying about the dial indicators. So I've taken my dial indicator readings, I've interpreted them and I've determined that the gap is 10 thousandths wider at the top and that the machine to be shimmed is 70 thousandths lower. So assuming that our fixed machine is, its center line is parallel to the ground, our movable is gonna be sitting something like this. The gap in the couplings is wider at the top and this machine is sitting 70 thousandths lower at the place we took the reading which would be the movable coupling. So what we're going to do is some calculations and figure out how to bring this into angular and offset alignment. It's a complicated process, but I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way to do it. We're going to start off by drawing our fixed shaft and we're going to draw it all the way across. So this would be our fixed shaft. So we're going to take that and draw it all the way to the back legs. Now we're going to draw the movable center line or the movable shaft in relation to the fixed. To start with, it's 70 thousandths lower at this coupling. So this is going to be the movable coupling right here because that's where we're going to be taking our dial reading is on that coupling. It's 70 thousandths low at that point. And we know because the gap is wider at the top that it's sloping down like this. We have a point here, which is where the front feet are. And we have a point here, which is where the back feet are. We need some measurements. Let's say that the diameter of the coupling is five inches. A is the distance from that movable coupling to the front feet. So that distance there. And let's say that distance is six inches. Then we have length B, which is the distance between the front feet and the back feet. And let's say that distance is 18 inches. So this is our machine to be shimmed, this shaft here. And we know to start with, it is 70 thousandths lower than the fixed. So at the front feet, we know that the machine to be shimmed will be 70 thousandths lower plus another amount, how much, however, however much it slopes down over this distance. And at the back feet, it's going to be 70 thousandths lower plus this amount, which is the amount it slopes down over this total distance. So we're going to use our concept of slope and use that to calculate what we need under the front feet 
and under the back feet. So first of all, the slope will be 10 thousandths, that's the gap difference, over the diameter, which is five inches. So the slope will be two thousandths of an inch per inch. So if it drops down two thousandths of an inch every inch of length, that means over six inches, this amount will be six times two thousandths of an inch per inch. So this would be 12 thousandths. We know that this is 70 thousandths here. So that means if we put 82 thousandths shims under our front feet, that would bring it up to this fixed level. Similarly, this amount here can be found using the slope. If this shaft is dropping 2 thousandths of an inch per inch, from this point, over 24 inches, it would drop 24 times 2 thousandths, it would drop 48 thousandths. And we know it was already 70 low, so if we add those two amounts up, that's going to give us the shims required under the back feet. Let me write this as formulas, because you might understand this, or you might require, you, it might make more sense to you if I write a formula. So we have our slope and we have our drawing. In order to calculate the shims required under the front feet of the machine to be shimmed, we've got to find this amount and the way we found that amount is the slope times the distance from the coupling to the front feet. So it's going to drop down a further two thousandths of an inch per inch of length and we have six inches of length for it to drop down. That's going to give us this amount right here. In addition to that, we have to add our offset at the movable coupling, which is 70 thousandths. When I multiply this, I get 12 thousandths. That's this amount, plus 70 thousandths. And that will equal 82 thousandths. So under the front feet, I need a total of 82,000 shims, 70 here and 12 here. We do almost exactly the same thing to find out the shims required under the back feet. In order to find the shims required under the back feet of the machine to be shimmed, I just change this distance and that's it. So the slope is still two thousandths of an inch per inch, but now I have to multiply it over this total distance all the way from the movable coupling to the back feet how much it will it drop over that total distance, which is 24 inches. That's going to give me this amount that it drops down right here. I still add to that this offset amount of 70 thousandths. When I multiply this, I get 48. So when I add these, I get 118 thousandths. Therefore, we're going to need to put 118 thousandths under the back feet we're going to need to put 82 thousandths under the front feet. And if we do that, we should correct both the angular and the offset misalignment all at once. What I want to point out is that when you have a gap wider at the top, we call that a positive slope. Let's take a look at an example where the gap is wider at the bottom and we have a negative slope. So I made one slight change. We're going to make the gap wider at the bottom, but it's still 10 thousandths difference in gap and it's still, the machine to be shimmed is still 70 thousandths lower. Let's take a look at what we would do if the gap was wider at the bottom. This is our fixed machine. This is our movable or our machine to be shimmed. The gap is wider at the bottom now. So notice how it's sloping and it's 70 thousandths lower to start. So it's 70 thousandths lower plus the gap is wider at the bottom. So this is the situation we're dealing with. So if I were to draw the fixed shaft and the movable in relation to that, showing that it's going to be at this angle because the gap is wider at the bottom. So we know the movable shaft is 70 thousandths lower at this point, but it's not going to be that quite that low here and it's certainly not going to be that low there. If I were to draw a horizontal line across here, this will be how much it comes up from the front feet and this is how much that shaft will come up at the back feet. 
And in order to determine those amounts, I need to find slope again. We're going to use our same dimensions, diameter of 5 inches. A will be 6 inches. B will be 18 inches. But when we're working with a gap wider at the bottom, in order for this to work out, we're, we're going to call that a negative slope. So our slope is a gap difference of 10, but we're going to make it negative. 10 over 5 inches. So my slope now is negative two thousandths of an inch per inch. Because what we want to end up doing is subtracting this amount from 70, not adding it. And the easiest way to do that is to work with a negative slope. But our formulas are exactly the same. Here's our drawing. This represents the center line of our fixed machine. This represents the center line of our machine to be shimmed or our movable machine. At the movable coupling, so right here, the machine to be shimmed is 70 thousandths lower. The gap is wider at the bottom, so it's going to be sloping up. That means that we have a negative slope. And so what we're going to do is first of all calculate the shims required for the front feet by taking the slope and multiplying by the distance from the movable coupling to the front feet. So that's going to be negative two thousandths of an inch per inch times six inches. And we add to that the original offset or the offset at the movable coupling, which is 70 thousandths. When we multiply that, we get negative 12 thousandths. What that means is that the movable machine will actually be 12 thousandths higher at, the, at this point than it was at this point. So if we add a negative 12 to 70, we get 58 thousandths. So basically it's 70 thousandths minus that 12 thousandths. So at this point, it's 58 thousandths lower. We do the same thing to calculate the shims under the back feet, except we just change this number. So we're going to take the slope and we multiply the distance from the coupling to the back feet, which is this total distance of 24 inches. And we still add that 70 thousandths. Negative 2 times 24 will give us negative 48. That represents this amount right here. It's actually 48 thousandths higher at, at this point than it was at this point. So if we subtract 48 thousandths from 70 or add a negative 48 thousandths to 70, we get a value of 22 thousandths. So what that means is we need to add 22 thousandths shims under the back feet, 58 thousandths under the front feet, and that will solve both the angular and the offset misalignment all at once. So this is the procedure for doing a one-step method. However, in this video, I didn't talk about dial indicators. I gave you the angular misalignment and the offset misalignment. In the next video, I want to talk about how we use dial indicators to get that information. So when you're ready, take a look.